Hey everyone, and welcome to your favorite, favorite YouTube series. I mean, it's our favorite YouTube series as well, right, Anthony? Totally. It's our favorite. It's gotta uh-huh. be. It, it, we've got another one now as well, uh, who's who's uh, who's joining us. That it's also his favorite. I like that. Absolutely um, new subscriber, so I, right? <laughs> um, I know what you're thinking, everyone. You're thinking, Matt, I would spend a lot more time listening to not another demo podcast if I wasn't so busy manually putting all this stuff together inside of my sock, to which I say, let's not talk about manual processes. Let's not even talk about automation. Let's go straight to ludicrous speed and talk about hyper automation and to talk about that very topic we have with us today new new not another demo is my favorite podcast member uh, brandon allen from torque and brandon give us a uh i always like to start off with the first question of like you know everyone is super busy like i said there and you know calendars are, are overflowing but first introduce yourself and then mm-hmm. tell us like why should I put a meeting with Torque on my calendar? Sure. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you guys for the opportunity to talk today. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, Brandon Allen. Uh, I am uh, I'm based out of Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I spent... So I, I'm in sales now, right? But uh, most of my career was actually on, this, on the cybersecurity side. I uh, went to Ohio State, got a degree in electrical engineering was a software engineer for a while and then uh, spent over a decade in cybersecurity uh, where I was a SIM and DLP specialist and then later went into leadership. Um, had enough of the politics and uh, got stolen away into into sales. So um, happens to the, the best I'm, of us. It happens to the best of us. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> uh, the, the reason I mentioned that is because when I'm when I'm talking to my customers, like I still write Python code for fun. So like you know, like I'm the sales guy that knows what they're talking about. I don't necessarily need the the engineer. So that's fun. So when I go in and talk to customers, um, I enjoy uh, hearing their challenges because a lot of times they're still things that I've I've experienced myself. Um, why would you want to talk to me? To your very point, Matt, um, we spend a lot of time doing stuff that uh, could be automated. I mean, it, just to keep it really simple, right? The, uh, the, the challenge is has always been, you know, how much time is it worth to put effort into building an automation versus just doing the work? And then trying to find somebody who can build that automation, who can write that Python or whatever it might be, that that's that's tough too. And those guys can guys and gals can be can be quite pricey. Uh so it's that balance. Uh Torque does it better. We make it super easy to build automation. So you can do all kinds of cool stuff that uh, you wouldn't even think of doing normally. So I guess the term automation, right? It's certainly been floated around for a while. There's been products and platforms that have been out there for a while. Um, I think to your point, some of them have been a little clunky and a little difficult, um, required a lot of coding. Uh, Not everyone is a Python scripter. I'm not. Um, So I guess, tell us a little bit. You said that Torque makes things easier. Mm -hmm. How? Yeah, well, so first of all, um, like we talk to customers all the time who... Uh, with their current SOAR technology. Um, do I, uh, so like they use SOARs historically have been the, the tools that automate incident response, right? Um, and we talk to them all the time about how they have spent the last year or two or however long uh, writing that Python code and and maintaining those automations and they've hit critical mass where they can't make any more automations because they're maintaining all the code that they, they have to maintain. Right. Um, Torque doesn't require code. We are a no code solution. We'll do no code, some code or full code, whatever you guys want. Like, so sometimes we do meet customers and they've got a really interesting use case and they want to write in Python or PowerShell or JavaScript or whatever. Torque can take that. And, and and let them use that still. But most of the time you want to build no code solutions because no code is stuff that we manage, right? It's still code somewhere, but we're going to piece those blocks together really easy. Uh, most people know how to build a flow chart. And that is, uh, that's, that's, that's going to be the, the thing that automates that work that you hate, right? And uh, that is easy to do. And then we take care of the code because it's just blocks that we maintain. Does that make sense? So you mentioned, uh, are you, you know, 
you brought up that SOAR historically has been used for automating incident response and you know running playbooks and data collection and and things of that nature. Uh, yes, sir. You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but Torque did start that way as well. Um, how can you kind of explain how you got to where it is today and what what's changed or what improvements have been made that allow the platform to go beyond uh, incident response capabilities? So when, when you say Torque started that way, I think it's a fair comment. Um, the idea, though, from of Torque from the beginning has been, like Matt said, hyper automation. So that's a term that I see a snicker on, on the corner of Anthony's. I don't know. But uh, no, it's a term that, that describes, uh, it's a Gartner term that describes automating business processes, right? So it's not necessarily a, um, a security term. Uh, we've adopted it because hyper automation also implies that you can automate anything. And so we are a security company. We have always been security focused. Our founders, um, they are, uh, you know, they, they started Luminate, which was a, a zero trust company that got bought by Symantec. Um, we are security 100%. So, of course, we go after the thing that people get, right? SOAR is a, is a nice, juicy target because people have felt that pain. And so when they see what we can do, it's like, oh, wow, like you can, you can automate and I don't have to write, you know, like they get excited. It's fun. It's fun to watch. For sure. So are you also competing in the space of like, you know, like the, the you know, every company calls it different, but like intelligent automation within business processes. So think of like a Cofax or, you know, something in that space where I've got an accounting process, right. That runs, you know, whatever every day. Um, is that I mean, something we, also targeting or are you, you know, kind of still focused mostly on the security space? We we lead with security. We go in with security. We are security company, like through and through. Um, but uh, if we're talking about security in that context, they want to do something a little outside the security spectrum, which happens to every team, right? Um, we can go there. It's, it's no worries. So let's talk a little bit about maybe for folks that aren't aren't down you know they're still kind of doing the manual path or, or they've they've started and stopped with uh with a and and soar since we have used it a few times um is a security orchestration automation and response um i forgot to lay the ground rules at the beginning of our oh. uh of our no acronym policy now we can go back to using the acronym because nobody wants to say those four words over and over and over again um right. but brandon tell us a little bit like what are what are the top two or three things like to really get quick bang for your buck if you're making an investment in a platform like Torque? Like, what are two two or three things that you typically see a SOC or or an IT organization or someone doing to to kind of get up and running? Um, that's a great question. Uh, It kind of so when I when I talk to customers uh, and, and like maybe we're at like a conference like like CloudCon was 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 awesome guys thanks for for putting that on that was a, a great event thank you thank you uh, when we were when we were there uh, you know I got thirty seconds with these with these customers uh, or you know these these people and uh, how do you pitch something in thirty seconds so what I usually say is like what sucks like what's the worst thing you do in your day let's automate that. And they don't usually think about it like that they can do that because automation is hard and it takes programming and it's, but it doesn't have to be right. And so that's, so, so to go back to your question though, where do we start? It's usually, um, it's usually that, that high value, uh, uh, that, that high value, um, process that they, they just have never been able to tackle. Um, and now I don't know if your question was more practical like if you want to talk about implementation we can talk about that too but um I, that, that's how i took your your question yeah i mean i'll open it up to the to the other as well like shutting off user accounts if something's happening or like what's a what's a specific use case that you guys see that makes a big difference for a company yeah oh, one of the ones that we see all the time is phishing right like uh, how do you deal with phishing um a lot of times it's still a manual process like i, I used to have a manual phishing process 10 years ago when I was doing it and it's still there and it hasn't changed. It's still like the same, somebody clicks a button in Outlook and it ends up in a folder and then someone has to look at it and it sucks. I, like I said, let's, let's do something. What, what's the thing that sucks? Let's get rid of it. 
Um, so I see fishing a lot, uh, something that's fun, uh, that, uh, I, I'll admit, I don't see it as often, but I think it's, 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 it's one of those things we need to work on is, uh, just in time access, right? So there are identity and access management platforms that do this stuff, but it's so easy with Torque. You can just go in and build a workflow. So like for me, when my laptop, uh, like when I want to install something, uh, that requires administrator privileges, I can go into Slack and ask Torque like the torque bot, I can ask torque for escalated privileges and it runs the torque workflow and then boom, my laptop's good. And that's the kind of speed and efficiency that, uh, you don't normally expect. Right. And, and maybe you wouldn't even tackle because it's too big of a lift, but when it's easy to do, you start to think about all kinds of the cool stuff that you, you could be doing. So integration with Slack. I like that torque bot. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, I guess let's talk then, um, other types of integrations that you might have, um, things like ServiceNow or other ticketing systems, um, SIMs and other, I give the acronym for SIM in the last episode. I'm not doing it again. Uh, <laughs> cause I always forget what it means. It's a terrible word. Um, yeah. uh, talk about some of the other technology, uh, um, connectors and things that you guys have. Yeah. So that, that's a, that's a great question too. Thank you. Um, so if you think about um, the challenges of, of automation, one of the biggest challenges is getting the data in in the first place. And a lot of uh, security event platforms, staying away from the acronym there for you, <laughs> uh, a lot of the security event platforms, they, they, um, they'll, they'll, they'll rely on maybe, maybe API or webhook or um, Torque tries to make it as easy as possible to get that data in. So webhooks, APIs, uh, we can even SSH into boxes if we have to, right? So not every not every system has an API that you can you can use. Um, I think I heard someone say Telnet once, like we could do that too. That's crazy, mm. but okay. Um, uh, and then the next the next step is uh, traditionally with automation platforms, you have to if you have a custom connector, so something that's not on their list of approved whatever, you have to go and write code to make that work. Uh, with Torque, we have uh, a, um, it's almost like Postman. Do you guys know Postman? Yeah. It's like a, yeah, right? Uh, it's a, yeah, like an API, for, for those who are listening and may not know, it's a, it's a, an API framework that you can put in a, into a GUI. Um, oh, graphical user interface. Sorry. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah. So, so with Postman, like that, that style of, of opinionated interface where we hide the details that are typically unimportant. We let you put in just the, the stuff that's, so you can set that integration really simply. Uh, so a lot of times, and, and, and it's, it sounds like marketing and it, it kind of is, but um, we have, you know, tons of integrations and we can build them very quickly, but we like to sometimes say playfully uh, that we have infinite integrations because you can build them in, you know, minutes to hours instead of days or weeks. So where do you typically see the the workload of this sitting? I know you said you're a security company, but I certainly could see, you know, other areas of the IT team and other things that would could could use this platform. Um, mm -hmm. But the actual like configuring of the automations and whatever all over the place, what is the typical types of folks that you guys are working with? Um, I mean, because uh, SOAR is such an easy conversation, I would say that we often speak with security operations, uh, just, just you know, by default. Um, but uh, I see more and more conversations with GRC, right? We're great for control tests, that kind of stuff. Uh, something that they wouldn't have automated before because it was just too much of a lift, right? Let's let's go ahead and set that up now. Um, identity and access management is another one that we see quite a bit. Um, so lots of teams where there's lots of manual work that you just – Let's just get it done, right? Let's automate it. Um, uh, oh, there was another component to your question. I I, I lost it. Apologies. <laughs> I, I lost it as well. So apparently the other part of my question wasn't very good. Um, no, I think that's, that's. Um, I mean, it's important to, to see like, you know, where these conversations tend to sit inside uh, an organization, right? Um, so I guess talk a little bit about, you know, because I, I feel like, you know, going down the automation path is not like I'm going to buy a product, I put it in, and then it does its thing. There's, you know, ongoing new, different, changed automations that we're doing. Talk a little bit to us about being a customer of Torque. Let's start with the pre-sales process, I guess. 
talk us through what that pre-sales process looks like a little bit in terms of like POV and, and all of that sort of thing. Sure. Um, I would say in my experience, it's, it's pretty traditional, right? We'll, we'll make sure that the customer has all of their questions answered about the, the product itself. Uh, so demos and, and, and whatever, our main meetings and demos we need to, to, to show it to the team. Uh, once that's done, uh, and I'm, I'm skipping all the, like, you know, the NDA legal stuff, but like once, yeah. once that's done, we go into, uh, you know, a proof of concept. We, we love to do proof of concept because we want customers to really see it, to really understand it. Uh, especially if they're putting us up against, you know, someone else in the industry, we want to make sure that, uh, they understand the differentiation, right? So, and, and, and you, you only get that if you're having your hands on it. So we really like that. Um, and then. Uh, and then once that's done, you know, let's, let's talk, uh, let's talk numbers. Like let's, let's, you know, it's, it, we keep it pretty simple. And then moving forward. So we get through that process. We prove everything mm -hmm. out. We go through the acquisition. I like how you said, let's leave those legal portions out. Cause we don't want to talk about those things. Um, no right, Anthony, <laughs> um, <laughs> where deals go to die. Um, mm -hmm. but talk a little bit about what it's like working with torque post sales, because a lot of times, you know, you can roll out the red carpet before you make the acquisition, but like, okay, mm -hmm. now we've, we've, we've paid for the platform. We want to start using it, but we don't know what we're doing. We need some help. We got, we want to start here, but we want to go here. Talk to us. Like what's the ongoing support system that you guys have for your customers? Yep. Um, so, uh, so I represent enterprise and I believe it's the same for all customers, but, um, uh, for all of the enterprise customers, we get, uh, everyone gets a, a customer success manager. Uh, plus, um, I stay engaged. So, um, you know, you'll always have my number. It's, I'm not going, it's like once, once we close the deal, I don't disappear, right? You can still call me, text me, whatever. Um, we have, uh, um, we call them jumpstart packages, but basically we have, uh, hours that you can use and, and jumpstart. So there's kind of two flavors now there's, there's jumpstart where we will, come in and we will help you learn the process. We'll help you learn how to build. We'll work with you to build some workflow, some uh, use case that you have. And we'll see that through to to its end. But in the process, we'll teach you how to do it. Uh, there's also uh, pure professional services if you know you just don't want to contribute. You don't want to give your people up to the lift, but you just want it done. So we can do that too. So there's kind of two, two options there. Uh, and then, um, of course, there's uh, free online learning. And in fact, uh, uh, let's see, I don't have it in front of me, but um, I can get it if your listeners want. Um, Torx online learning library is open uh, and free to use, look at anytime. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, please uh, send that along. We'll make sure that we get it in the comments down below and hey folks while you're while you're looking at the comments down below hit that like and subscribe button see i got it in earlier than i normally do um so um i guess you know again in a in a space that's you know there's there's some other players in that space or whatever if you were mm -hmm. to give us like two or three a couple of things that like you feel really sets torque apart from your competition um talk about the differentiators that you feel you guys have I love it. Thank you. Um, one I would say is our, uh, our SaaS platform. So, uh, software as a service platform. So, <laughs> uh, so our cloud platform, uh, is entirely, uh, um, container it's microservice based architecture, right? Um, so the way that the architecture scales is, you know, it scales as much as the cloud is, is it can scale. Uh, so that part is, great because then the um the on-premises architecture is is very sim simple right you, you you if you have a docker environment you, you pull down our step runner and uh the implementation is 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 now good on-prem that's it like you don't have to do a whole lot um uh i, I need to take more adhd meds matt i i lost the point to this. help me um <laughs> You and me both, man. I'm sorry, um, but uh, just some of the stuff that like sets you guys apart. That's certainly that's, that's what it was. Um, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I like the fact that you've got that that SaaS platform, easy to, um, you know, easy to get up and running. I think um, uh, is good. What else you got? So, yeah, differentiator sets us apart. Right. Uh, sorry about that. So, um, our platform is one. So that is the scale of our platform and and how easy it is to implement is something that's pretty big. Uh. The other thing I think, and this is huge, is 
is how much we do with AI. So, um, and I know AI is a buzzword and everyone, everyone across the internet right now just rolled their Every eyes when I said AI that. Today, yeah. Every <laughs> platform, I know. What is your, what is your uh, AI? Right? Yeah. We have a co -pilot. No, I'm kidding. We do, but like, that's the joke, right? Everyone has one of those now. Um, the, uh, we have something we call uh, Socrates, which we just, uh, we announced at RSA and implemented right about the Black Hat timeline. Socrates is an AI analyst. So you have at the base layer, you've got what we call hyper automated, you know, hyper automation. So you can connect all of your different components in your security program together so that they can automate. But once you can, let's say, block a uh, uh, um, uh, malicious IP, I don't know, right? Uh, or uh, some kind of phishing thing, whatever. That automation is great. But now you need to know who did it and why did they do it and when did they do it and all that stuff, right? So that's a case. So the next la layer on top of hyper automation is what we call hyper SOC. It's a hyper automated case management that uh, I'm building to the differentiator here, I swear. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't lose the point this time. I was going to um, ask you this question that you're answering right now anyway, so it's good. Love it. Yeah. So uh, so Torque has taken case management and we've hyper automated every element of it. So if anything changes in the case, any state change, any note, comment, whatever, you can kick off a Torque workflow and, and you know, do whatever you need to do, right? Whatever the automated thing makes sense for that process. This is where we come into the differentiation. This is where you've stepped in front of our leadership and that is our AI analyst. So um, we call it Socrates, right? Little play on words, we like that. Yeah. Um, uh, Socrates is an AI analyst that watches the entire case management system and can respond to incidents that come into the case management system intelligently. So it can follow, um, I mean, you can ask it to do things kind of co-pilot style, which everybody does. But what I think is fascinating is you can also assign tickets to it, even automatically assign tickets to it. And it will follow the, the same run books, books that your analysts follow. It'll read those and follow those and complete those tickets autonomously. However you need to do it, it'll, it, it'll follow. So uh, we actually sell a number of AI analysts uh, to go with, you know, the, with the hyper automation platform and the case management system. And that is something I think is uh, a really interesting conversation uh, with leaders. I mean, certainly with, uh, with the practitioners, uh, they felt the pain and they see the automation capabilities and they're excited. But with, uh, with leaders, there's also, you know, some of them have um, uh, annual objectives to, to get to automation, some kind of uh, AI. Yep. And uh, with Torque. Is that, now, something, is that something you guys right? built in house? Are you using open AI or Google's or like, what's the, like, we, what's the LM? What's the, what's the AI behind uh, Socrates? As I understand it, we predominantly use Google Vertex in the backend. Um, there's, uh, not entirely though, as I understand it, there are elements of the other cloud platforms that we've chosen because they were the right elements to use. I couldn't tell you what those decisions were, mm -hmm. uh, but predominantly Google Vertex. And then, uh, oh, where's it? What else was I about that? Um, yeah, that's, that's the answer basically. Now uh, we did, but everything was in-house. So we do have a chief AI officer and, and our engineers, you know, put it all together ourselves. It wasn't something we purchased or anything like that. Um, so then when we're talking with leaders, they're, uh, uh, they have these goals and effectively, and this is me speaking, this isn't necessarily my marketing team or anything, but in a sense, we've, we've commoditized an AI solution for SOC, right? For the security operations team, because they can now transact and have an automated response, automated interaction, uh, AI analyst, uh, um, uh, help or right? i can't think of the right word but um you know where, where we assist the ai analysts with questions that they have even about the cases themselves uh, we do data enrichment we do summarization of the cases so instead of wasting 10 minutes trying to read all the different indicators of compromise and problems notes we do it all for you just put it right there at the top uh it saves you so much time um if you can't think of how to build a workflow you can type in english what you want and it will build the workflow for you using ai um, if you can't think of the code that you're trying to, you know, it's some AWS, whatever, you can type it in in English, what you want, and we'll build the code for you. Uh, it's not always perfect because you know how AI is, but uh, it's 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 a fun time to be a Torque watching all this go on. <laughs> It'll at least get you a lot closer, right? If 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 totally. you're doing some code to to check out and see. So nice. Well, Anthony, I learned something today. I think you learn something every day. Isn't that the, isn't that the goal? <laughs> learn something new every day. 
What I learned today was that while horsepower sells cars, torque wins races. Nice. And so with that, uh, I'll take oh, it. Come on, that was pretty good. So it's actually uh, dad. It's... always hating on my dad joke stuff. Um, oh, that's it. It's a, it's a win <laughs> at my family. Uh, that's actually it's funny you say that. Um, as I understand it, our uh, our founders um, are big into racing, and so that's well, that's where it came that's from. That's where they got the name. Yeah, they took off the UE and they added an AI. Boom! Hey. How about that one, Anthony. How about that one? <laughs> Getting my daughter here to roll her eyes at you, you know, like that's. that's I need I need to add in like some fake crowd noise when I get those off. Yeah. I got to figure uh, that out. My editing skills got to get better. <laughs> um, well, Brandon, thank you uh, so much. Thank you also for uh, for having supported CloudCon um, this yeah. summer as well. Glad you guys were there. Hope to see you more uh, uh, in moving forward. If anyone is interested in learning more about automation or maybe finally being able to. Put some automation into your organization. Um, we've got details in the comments. As I said, check out Torque. Um, pretty awesome platform and uh, definitely a company making a lot of noise out there. It does help that you guys have probably the best or some of the best marketing people that I've seen um, and some very creative stuff that I, uh, I like from a marketing perspective as well. So um, thanks again, Brandon. We appreciate it. And we will see everyone for episode 49. Thank <laughs> you.